Welcome to the public meeting. Please rise for the Pledge of Pledge Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Call to order. The purpose of this meeting is to provide the public an opportunity to comment on the City of Springfield, Illinois, FY 2019 Annual Action Plan Submittal Amendment 2 for COVID response. The notice was initially posted on Friday, June 4th by the City of Springfield, that, uh, notifying the public that it's amending its 2019 action plan. It is to allocate and to allocate the remainder of the CDBG COVID-19 supplemental funding. The Mayor's Office of Planning and Economic Development intends to submit this amendment for $776,510 in Community Development Block Grant CB funds after June 15th. The city is seeking comments on the proposed use of CDBG funds for COVID-19 mitigation purposes. The city will consider all comments received before 5.30 on June 15th. Before submitting the proposal to HUD, the city will continue to accept comments from the public after its substantial and use of public comments to guide and inform possible future amendments. The city will hold two public hearings to gather comments on the proposed use of funds. The first is today, and the second will be June 15, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. In city, at the city council meeting. The outbreak of COVID-19 and the resulting response has had an unprecedented effect on the city's economy and employment. In order to utilize this additional funding provided by HUD to respond to the coronavirus, the city will make the following changes to its 2015-2019 consolidated plan and 2019 action plan. The first project is for business assistance. The target area is the downtown central business LMI census track 14. We will allocate $200,000 to this activity. The description of the project is as follows. Due to the impacts on businesses, due to social distancing requirements caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, it has become apparent that a return to business as usual for businesses cannot happen at this time, and residents are less able to enjoy downtown urban areas. In order to encourage Springfield residents to be downtown in a safe manner in accordance with federal and state guidance, CDBG funds will be used to support the downtown central business district impacted by the COVID emergency through economic assistance. Financing will be provided through forgivable grants to small businesses in order to stay in operation and address the, the impacts. A maximum of 10,000 will be provided in a forgivable grant to businesses in the form of parklets. Each assisted business must demonstrate compliance with the CDBG LMI national objective. Are there any questions? I do want to add on that the maximum will be 10,000 per business. And we, we approximate 20 uh, businesses being served, restaurants and bars. The second project is a COVID-19 public service facilities project. We were going to allocate 76,000 to this activity. CDBG CB funds will be used to expand and improve public services for youth in a, manager, in a manner that reduces the risk of COVID-19. Outdoor opportunities will be provided in public parks in low mod areas. It is expected funds will be used for public services. 
If necessary, some of these funds may be used to make small improvements to the existing facilities to reduce the risk of spreading COVID. Are there any questions or comments? The third project proposed with this funding is the COVID-19 Compass for Kids program. This is a citywide program. We will uh, be reallocating a portion of round one funds with round two for a total of $50,000. CDBG funds will be used to support the Compass for Kids program to bolster their programs designed for low-income children and families recovering from COVID. Any comments or questions? The actual total will be $50,510, 50,000 from round one reallocation, and then $510 from round two. So for a total of fifty thousand five hundred and ten dollars. The next project is COVID nineteen job training. This will be citywide. This project will allocate seventy five thousand uh, to train individuals by an MC three certified entity. The funds will support Bone Training Institute to provide multi-craft core MC3 training to those that are unemployed or underemployed. This project will be undertaken as part of the housing redevelopment project described above. The five month training program will provide 20 individual classroom hours and on-site job skills, training through renovating houses. Tied to this project, Excuse me for a second. Tied to this project is a COVID-19 housing redevelopment project. These CDB funds will be provided to purchase and rehab dilapidated housing to convert it to affordable housing opportunities for rental and homeowners. Rental properties will be a part of the supporting housing initiative. For this pro uh, activity, it's 325,000. Are there any comments or questions? <clears throat> Finally, the last project is the COVID-19 homeless outreach. This again will be citywide. We will have dedicated $100,000 to this activity. These funds will be used to conduct street outreach and provide supportive services to homeless populations adversely affected by COVID-19. Are there any comments or questions? Please do. Address. Could you please state your name and address for the record? Name is Jim Dickey, 520 South 2nd Street, apartment 514. Uh, these different projects, uh, do they have like deadline dates for applications? And they've got target dates. Does that mean target dates means that expenditures can be made through those dates? Well, these are target dates at this point when the programs are developed and they go live, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, notify the public. These are, target dates for completion. these are target dates for completion. So that means all the funds plan to be expended by those dates? We're going to try. Okay, no, but you could go beyond that if you needed to. Um, I think the uh, CDBG allocation is yeah, they, it ends on a certain date and we need to have those funds expended by that date. Okay. What date is that? Final date? For the last initiative? 
That was for uh, December 31st, 2022. Okay. Yeah, I mean, some of the others have earlier target dates, but all of them would have December 31st, 2022 as a final date. Well, the date of completion for the projects are the ones that are on the uh, document itself right. that will be submitted to HUD. And so that's where we intend to hopefully complete the project. So, the, so for instance, on the first one by August 30th, 2022. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one with regards to public services would be June 30th, 2022. So if that gets approved, then those would be the dates the funds would have to be expanded by for each individual project. Correct. Okay. Thank so, you. Thank you. Come on up. Um, could you state your name and address for the record, please? Teresa Haley, 801 South 11th Street, NAACP. Um, we are here for the public comment part of the money that's being received by the city of Springfield, and we want to ask for our fair share. Um, as an East Side organization and the oldest civil rights organization in the world that was started because of the 1908 race riots in Springfield, it is important that we continue to do our community outreach. We run a back to school, stay in school academy that's been in existence and around for over 25 years. Last week, we had 28 students in our program and eight to graduate. Out of those eight students to graduate, four of them have jobs. These are severely disadvantaged children, um, criminal backgrounds, teenage pregnancy, homelessness, and so on and so forth. The NAACP is capable and qualified to handle a summer youth program in terms of a summer camp, summer jobs, summer enrichment, and summer development. But we're looking to plant the seed and to get our kids off the street and to provide something. So we're asking that some of these dollars be allocated to the Springfield branch NAACP um, for this endeavor this summer through the CARES Act. We realize that there's CARES money involved and the NAACP is asking for our fair share. If you need a dollar amount, I would say upwards between 150 and $200,000 to meet the goals and the needs, not only of the organization, but for the program that we're planning on putting forth this summer. We applied and tried to run a, um, not only an after school program at the NAACP back to school, stay in school office, but we applied and wanted to do summer school there, but we were behind the eight ball. So we are here today to request some of the funds for a community reinvestment to help our young people and people in the black and brown community, disadvantaged community. Thank you. You wanna know what some of those programs might be? Sure. Absolutely. I will submit them in writing. If you have them in writing, you can submit them. Okay. For but the verbally, we're doing some training programs the programs that have existed in the, in the past have been pretty good, but we're finding that a lot of our, especially our female graduates, don't want to cut grass, don't want to do some of the, the outdoor type of activity jobs. So we want to prepare them for the future, teaching them how to use the computer, how to use software, do PowerPoint presentations, Excel spreadsheets, Word, things to make them employable, teaching them how to dress for success, um, teach them how to build resumes and just be good stewards of their money, financial planning and development, and how to save money and to reinvest in the community and become successful home owner as well. Thank you. Sounds like a great program. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Questions? Is she on the text? Okay. 
Is there anybody on Zoom that wishes to make a comment? Yes, we have people signed in. So I'll start in the screen with um, Amy Foyle. Hi, I, this is Amy Boyles with Mercy Communities. Um, I don't really have any comments. Um, I think my only real question, I noticed that, uh, I think it was on number eight with the rehab, um, that there was a little over $300,000 allocated to rehab some houses and that permanent supportive housing would be a, a part of that project. Um, I was just wondering if you had any direction of um, uh, of thoughts of who that might um, agencies that might take that on with regards to the uh, training of the individuals that be bone training institute they're on South Grand no. and it's uh, for housing no yep. no I'm sorry I was I'm not looking at the document at the moment okay. um it, the uh, the rehab of the houses yeah they would do the rehab actually and. Uh, uh, as far as once the houses are rehabbed, they'd be available for uh, purchase or um, uh, for supportive housing program initiative. Okay, great. Great. Are there any other comments? Yes, uh, Ronnie Norton. Hi, yeah, I'm here, but I, I didn't have a comment to share at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Josh Sabo. Hi, I'm listening in, but I don't have any comments at this time. Thanks. And then a uh, uh, Bill Barton. Yeah, I'm just uh, just observing and listening. Thank you. Oh, I, I mean, I did have a quick question. Amy had just mentioned the document. What, what document is that, and how would you uh, view or access that? What was that? I can send it via link. I'll send it through the link. Perfect. Thank you. That is everyone. Um, aside from William Kubal, who I think is here to just answer questions. Yep, no comments for me, thanks. Are there any comments or questions? From the audience? Closing out the meeting at 318. Meeting adjourned.